Happening today, a former Greenwood Village police officer will be sentenced today in the 2021 shooting death of 17 year old Peyton Blitzstein. Earlier this year, a jury found Adam Holland guilty of manslaughter. His hearing is set for 9 o'clock this morning in Arapahoe County. That's where 90s reporter Brianna Clark joins us from now. Brianna, the judge in this case had a wide range of sentences to choose from. That's correct. And to make this decision, the judge will consider every aspect of the case, not just what happened, but also Adam Holland's background. The judge can decide to impose probation or probation with the requirement of serving in the county jail, or the judge can send Holland to prison for up to six years. The shooting happened November 24th, 2021. Detectives say it started with an argument between Holland and a group of teenagers driving through an Aurora neighborhood. Court documents say 17 year old Peyton Blitzstein shot first at Holland, who then returned fire. But prosecutors say when Peyton fired his weapon, Holland was already advancing toward him and another teenager. The whole thing was caught on a neighbor's home security camera. Nine News legal expert Scott Robinson says that helped the jury make their decision. The importance of video is why I think that the ring video from across the street played an enormous role in the conviction in question. Certainly, Holland's intoxication and the fact that it was a ghost gun on the other side, those may have been factors too, but nothing outweighs the value of a video of a crime in a criminal trial. Peyton's family is expected to be in court today for the sentencing. They will have a chance to share what they think should happen to Holland. The hearing is scheduled to start in less than three hours. We will be there and we'll let you know what happens. Reporting live in Arapahoe County, Brianna Clark, 9 News. All right, Brianna, we appreciate the update. Thank you. Right now, Lakewood police are searching for the driver in a deadly hit and run crash that happened on Tuesday night. It happened at 14th and Carr near Colfax and Wadsworth. Police say the driver they're looking for was going east on 14th when they hit a pedestrian. He was taken to the hospital but later died. Lakewood police have identified him as 41-year-old Ronald Jones of Edgewater. Witnesses describe the driver to police as a black man with dreadlocks driving a silver or gold sedan. Anyone with information should contact Lakewood police. A teacher was arrested after he was accused of inappropriately touching students at a middle school in Fort Collins. Police believe there could be more victims as well. Back in April, staff from Poudre School District reported accusations to police involving Evan King. The 50 year old has worked as a teacher and assistant track coach at Lincoln Middle School for nearly nine years. But Poudre Schools tells us the charges stem from reports of behavior during this past school year. A four month investigation found two girls who were victims and multiple student witnesses leading to King's arrest on Tuesday. Anyone who may be a victim or have additional information is asked to call Fort Collins police. Their number is 970-221-6340. It's also listed at the bottom of your screen. Highlands Ranch residents came out last night to a meeting to speak their mind about a possible new park going in on the open space. Most don't want it. Officials in Douglas County say the open space is already zoned as a park, but people who live in the area say the space is home to elk and golden eagles. Right now, the county is not considering any formal proposals to develop a full park with athletic fields. First, they'd have to approve $250,000 in funding for a feasibility study that would look at the impact to the land, including what would happen to the wildlife living there. Several people came out to the park advisory board's meeting last night saying they don't support putting in the park. Look at this room. Highlands Ranch does not want this. The majority of the homeowners do not want this. Do not fund a, a study that's going to cost a thousand dollars per acre. That's ridiculous. Again, this is in the very early stages of developing a plan for the park. If the county does approve the funds for the feasibility study, Douglas County officials say they'll hold opportunities for community feedback. Denver's Department of Transportation and Infrastructure is worried about their crews working in this upcoming heat wave. The agency says they're reminding staff to stay hydrated and protect themselves from the sun, but some just can't avoid it like the paving crews. The agency says it has not had to issue a work stoppage yet, but it will if it needs to. Colorado isn't the only state under heat alerts today. It spans to multiple states. In those areas, air conditioning could be a matter of life or death, and the death toll is growing. Studies show that the human body can start overheating when it's in 
the 90s, depending on humidity. Officials think recent heat is responsible for deaths in Oregon and California. And among the fatalities in the Bay Area are people who did not have homes. Here in Denver, the city is doing what it can to make sure that those unhoused here have a place to cool off. Nine supporter Brianna Fernandez joins us now. Brianna, what exactly are the city's plans? Yes, yeah, so street outreach teams will provide referrals to shelters and cooling centers for people experiencing homelessness, plus offer free bus services from 830 in the morning till 330 at night, Monday through Friday. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment also made the decision last night to activate the cooling centers. The cooling centers will open tomorrow and will go on through Sunday. Denver Parks and Recreation will offer several spaces to cool off during this heat wave as well. That includes rec centers, which anyone can go to, plus Denver Public Library will also open all of its branches. People can access these centers for free during normal business hours. You get access to the facility, but and you don't you can't really access the whole facility. There's just a designated area with seating, the water access to the drinking water. Staff is around, but there's not actually anyone like assigned to that specific area, but people can ask for help if they need anything. Now, the National Weather Service issued a heat advisory starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning as temperatures soar to 100 degrees across the plains and most of the I-25 corridor. So that heat advisory is for portions of the Denver metro area and the northeast plains. That advisory will run until 8 p.m. tomorrow night and will likely go on through the weekend. So with these extremely hot temperatures, city officials say limit your outdoor activities, stay indoors, of course, drink plenty of water. And if you have to be outdoors, just have that sunscreen ready. So let's send things over to Keeley Chalmers mm -hmm. with a look at your local forecast and that brutal temperature that we're going to experience tomorrow. That's right. And like you said, we are under a heat advisory starting tomorrow. This is for Grand Junction, the areas you see there in Yellow Pueblo to Colorado Springs along the I-25 corridor and from Parker all the way up the I-25 corridor to the Wyoming border where we're talking temperatures anywhere from about 98 to 103 degrees. We talk about taking precautions with yourself, but you're also going to want to talk, uh, check in on your vulnerable neighbors and always keep your pets in mind as well. All right, Keely, thank you. Sky Knight is still over that interstate crash we are following right now, causing some delays for folks getting ready to travel on eastbound I-70 in the area of Washington Street. So this is actually from the northbound I-25 ramp getting onto eastbound I-70 and then right where things are splitting off at Washington. So since we last checked in, if you're just joining us, uh, looks like fire trucks have cleared out. We still have emergency crews getting ready to head out the door here or head off of the highway, but this looks like the vehicle vehicle involved in the crash with that front end damage. We can see it really smashed in and there's still some debris. We've got police officers just behind it. So it's right in the middle of the interstate where things are splitting off onto I-70 and over to Washington Street this morning. So not a full closure, but it's certainly causing delays. Please be careful if you're getting ready to travel this way soon.